Honourable, the member for Carbonier, have a grace. Mr. Speaker, I'm going to tell you one thing. It's a job to, it's a job to stand here. I, I, I'm back at that one. <laughs> job to stand here. I'm back at that one, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I just want, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I'm, I just want to say one thing. Yes, there's, yes, there's been investments in school, and I'm going to give you an example, and, and big investments. I'm going to use the school in Carabineer, the new Carabineer Academy. That's the school I'm going to use. That when it was open, when it was open last year, when it was open last year, it was built too small. It was built too small. The government had to turn around and build four more classrooms on the side of it while the children were in there trying to learn. So I'm going to tell you something. When the member, when the member from St. John's North, when the member from St. John's North gets up and speaks about uh, schools being too, uh, too small, there's one case there now. Somebody over there, somebody over there, Mr. Speaker, got to tell me what happened. What happened to the numbers? Why were the numbers? Because right at that point in time, we had three and four kids. We had three and four kids in one locker, in one locker. So, Mr. Speaker, to something, you know, and, and I mean, and, and I respect, I respect uh, 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 you guys over there, but I'll tell you something. You don't tell all the truth, Mr. Speaker. They certainly don't tell all the truth. I can guarantee you that. Mr. Speaker, I bought issues here over the last, uh, over the last year or so. One of them was down in Freshwater, and I want to speak about my district, Mr. Speaker, because I'm very proud to stand here as the member of the House of Assembly for the Carbonair Harbour Grace District. And I want to talk about number three, Will, down in Freshwater. Now, we all know it's arsenic into it, and we know it's high level arsenic. The Minister of Municipal Affairs knows uh, uh, all about it. Asked the, uh, he asked the, uh, the uh, local service district chair down there to, uh, to uh, go ahead and get estimates. And he went out and got estimates. Now, he was talking to somebody in municipal affairs there the other day. Now, the arsenic is a big, major issue, boys. The worst thing that we could ever do is turn our backs on people who got that situation because they deserve, the people of fresh water deserves clean drinking water. As the same, as the, as the same as every person in this province, Mr. Speaker, every person. You're not, you're not the, uh, you're not the uh, gentleman who was told under the local service district. You're not, you're not. He was told. You're going to have to wait for the next new budget to come down. Shame, Mr. Speaker. Shame on, shame on this government to allow the people in fresh water we say to be treated like that. I can't, I can't believe it. I can't believe it, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I stood here many times and I spoke about the, uh, the, uh, the road cutoffs uh, down in fresh water and Bristol's Hope. I spoke here on the floor uh, on Long Lance on it. I presented petition after petition. So while government's over there tapping themselves on the back and saying how wonderful, wonderful they are, I can assure this government, you're, you're not wonderful to the people in the Carib near Harbour Grace District because you've neglected them. You've neglected them. Now, Mr. Speaker, now, Mr. Speaker, I'm going to tell you, Mr. Speaker, I really like for him to stop clapping and, 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 and that over there right now because, you know, they know I'm right. They know I'm right. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, up in Bryan's Cove. Bryan's Cove, now, I'll tell you. Bryan's Cove, over the last number of years, been applying to, the, to municipal affairs for to get the point road done. Now, this is very interesting because I, I got to tell you this one because this is indeed very interesting. Point road. Is to the point now where it's hardly usable. Last year they might have been able to tack code it, we say, and save the road. Forget about it, after this winter it's not going to happen. No. Now school buses goes out over that road, Mr. Speaker. School buses. And you know what the school bus that driver is saying? We can't go out there any longer to pick up the children. We can't go out there any longer to pick up the children. Why? It's dangerous on the bus for the kids, so they can't go out. Mr. Speaker, just imagine, this road has been applied for by the town for the last four or five years, and to this point is not done. I'll tell you how bad it is. I'm going to tell you how bad it is. 
The Department of Transportation, I think, does their plowing firm over there on this road. Is that bad? The Department of Transportation gave them 60 bags of wet patch to patch the holes in those. That's how bad it is, Mr. Speaker. 60 bags of wet patch. Can you imagine? So how bad was it that the, that the, that the equipment didn't even want to go out there? My, Mr. Speaker. I heard the Minister of Finance get up there yesterday and he spoke about all the things we say that the government done good. And, and you, you guys over there, you actually absolutely got me amazed. You guys have been in government for 12 years. And every time I hear each and every one of you over there getting up to speak, every time he, he blames on the Liberals, he blames on the great guys, you've been over there 12 years. You've got to take your own blame. The Liberals didn't do it, and if the Liberals done something that was so wrong, why didn't you guys correct it? You had 12 years to correct it. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, 12 years to correct it. It's crazy. I, I've never seen anything like it in, in my life. You guys don't take responsibility. It's always the Liberals that done it. Don't understand it, Mr. Speaker. Don't understand it whatsoever. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, in Carabinier, by the TC Square, and the minister, not the present minister of uh, municipal affairs now, but the one prior to him. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Speaker, I'll tell you, over there, every year, the town of Carabineer had to get after this government to have the lines placed on the road there, a very dangerous place, very dangerous place indeed. Have to get after government to turn around and get the lines put in there because of people coming into Carabineer and one thing or another so that there wouldn't be any accidents there. And Mr. Speaker, last year, got after the minister. They, they finally got the lines put in, but they forgot to put the arrows in. They forgot to put the arrows in. We went back to them. I went back with, with, to them uh, uh, in the email and letters to follow up. The, the arrow signs, the directional arrows, were never put on it, Mr. Speaker. Never put on it. So, so much for the safety of the public and, and this government professors how he wants to be uh, very, very uh, compassionate with people in that. No, Mr. Speaker, absolutely not. There's no compassion, no compassion whatsoever. Mr. Speaker, and I just mentioned the, uh, point, the, uh, point, of, uh, the point of road there in, uh, in, uh, up in the district there in Bryan's Cove. Mr. Speaker, at what point in time do we have to look at this and say the safety of our children is most foremost in our mind? At what point in time, Mr. Speaker? Because apparently for the last four or five years, they didn't have that concern. This town's been applying for that. They had their share to put into that, Mr. Speaker. And so safety is certainly not, not on the minds of this group. Mr. Speaker. There's many things wrong. Lady Lake Road, I'll just give you an example. Lady Lake Road's been waiting for uh, road work for the last 20 years. The ticket road up there, and this is factual, this is factual. If you went on the ticket road and talk about, talk about uh, preference and what this government has done, part of, that, part of that road is in the members' district, the the, uh, the uh, speaker's district, part of it is in mine. If you looked at if you looked at the part that was in the uh, and the chairs uh, and the t chairs district, it's in pretty good shape. I got to say, it's in pretty good shape. Over on the other side, Mr. Speaker, I'm going to tell you something. You would never believe it. You would never believe it. it you would never believe it. I'll tell you something else. He done in Spaniards Bay. I'll tell you something done, and I got a short while to get it out, so I got to try to get it out. In Spaniards Bay, the divider was the church on top of the hill, and the road was paved there. The member for Carbon near Harbour Grace, before I got here, uh, they got put, Curb and Gutter put on his, uh, on his side of the district. It was a Liberal on the other side of the district, and they wouldn't put in the Curb and Gutter. So there's how technical it gets. Mr. Speaker, I'm going to tell you something. And I'm fair as, as fair can be, Mr. Speaker, and I respect a lot of guys across that way, and I've had many, many conversations there, but I'll tell you something. Your report card is an F. 
because you fail the people in my district and there's lots of other issues out in my district that don't get no attention from this government. I remind and I'll say that right now, Mr. Speaker. Expired. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.